Saudi Arabia has confirmed it will be sending two female athletes to the London Olympics. It's the first time the country has selected women for the Games. 800 meters runner Sarah Attar is one of them. She's been training in San Diego in California. The 17-year-old's inclusion at the Olympic Games comes after months of negotiations between the IOC and Saudi officials. Every country competing at the London Games will now include female athletes for the first time ever in Olympic history. A big inspiration for participating in the 2012 Olympics for me is being one of the first women for Saudi Arabia to be going. It's such a huge honor and I hope that it can really uh, make some good strides for women over there to get more involved in the sport. And good luck to her. Well, Tim Woodhouse is the head of policy at the Women's Sport and Fitness Foundation, and he joins me now. Um, I guess you must be ecstatic at the fact that finally there's going to be an Olympics where every country has at least one woman representing them. Absolutely. It's taken 116 years, but finally we've got there. This really is a historic achievement for both the Olympic movement and, we think, for women and girls in Saudi Arabia who will now have the chance to be inspired by their own sportswomen representing them on the international stage. I mean, you mentioned more than 100 years, but in reality there were only about three countries left in this Olympics that still hadn't announced them. How uh, much pressure did the International Olympic Association put on these countries to send some female representatives? Well, I think it's fair to say that there was a lot of international pressure from both the IOC and charities like ourselves and Human Rights Watch in America to really put pressure on the Saudi government to make this change. The fact that Qatar and Brunei had already decided earlier in the year that they would be sending female athletes really heaped the pressure on the Saudi Arabians to make this decision. And it's a very late decision with only two weeks to go, but it's fantastic that it's come. We've just heard from uh, Sarah Attar, um, very young, only 17, running in the 800 metres. She's training in the US, hearing her speak. I think we can assume that she spent a lot of time in the US. I mean, this may be a a good thing symbolically, but does it really help the women in those countries? I mean, is, is sports really more available to them now, do you think? Well, you're right. This, this one decision doesn't change the situation for women and girls in Saudi Arabia who face um, an uphill struggle to be allowed to participate in sports and physical activity. But we really think that seeing um, Sarah and her uh, fellow competitor compete at the Games will, be, will prove inspirational for the women and girls themselves and will hopefully reassure some of the conservative elements within Saudi Arabia that actually the participation by women is not such a bad thing after all. And then we have the other end of the spectrum, the US, will have more women on their team than men. That's quite a surprise. It is. Or maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Well, I think it's probably even more surprising in one way because that's the first time that that it's ever happened. And that's um, that's despite the fact that actually there will still be more medals available for men at the Olympics than for women. Just because in a number of sports, I mean, we should congratulate the IOC on another reason. It's the first, these London Games will be the first time that women have the chance to compete in every sport, so the inclusion of women's boxing does mean that women have the chance to participate in every sport, but there are still 30 fewer fewer events within those sports that women can compete for. So it is surprising that the Americans have sent more women. Tim Woodhouse, Head of Policy at the Women's Sport and Fitness Foundation, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.